So I'm guys going to run through another uh, modeling in place feature. Um, so we go to component under the architecture tab, component, model in place. I always go to generic models and I let it name it for me. Uh, last time I talked, to, talked a little bit about the sweep command. This time I'm going to talk about the revolve, another useful uh, command. One thing that's key about anything when you're modeling in place is understanding where your work plane is at. Um, so I, I like to have it showing most of the time and it just toggles on and off so it's, it's real easy. And you can set it here. I'm happy with where this one's at, but let's say you needed to do a revolve you know, as a spire on a building or something like that. Um, you know, and this, this plane isn't gonna work for you. You can select your plane in here you can pick a plane. Um, I recommend picking your plane from 3D from kind of an offset angle because if you're trying to pick it head on sometimes it doesn't work quite right for you. Um, so there's two parts to the um, revolve. There's the axis line and the boundary line. So I like to set the axis line first. This is basically like the absolute s center of everything that's going to be revolving or spinning. Um, so this is kind of ridiculous right now, it's at 116 feet, but for the purpose of this, it's it's not really going to matter. Um, and then we're going to draw a boundary line. So the boundary line is kind of like the cross-section cut of what the revolve would look like, or kind of like almost almost like half of the silhouette. Um, so, so this can really be anything, and I'll put a handful of things in here just to show um what different things might do as you as you draw a revolve um and then I'll go ahead and click so another thing about a revolve actually that I should mention is you have the option you don't have to um your boundary doesn't have to touch in all places along the uh, axis line. So, like if I wanted a kind of a hollowed out bottom or, or notched out bottom, I can do this, and I'll, that'll that'll show just one more aspect here. And then you're just going to click go, and it takes it around in a circle for you perfectly. Um, since we're in level one, um, I'll take us into 3D so we can get a better idea of what's going on here. But as you can see from, maybe what I can do is let's do this so you can get a good idea of what's going on here. Um, if you remember, half of this on the right here is what I drew. Um, and, and here on the left is what we ended up with. And so if you look at it from the side here, you can see that profile. It almost looks like a pawn, like a chess piece. Um, and you remember that notch I took out of the bottom. Well, there it is. I'll turn on some colors so you can see it a little bit better, but there's that notch at the bottom, um, hollowed out or, you know, whatever, it, it, it depends. You could do a whole form that loops around like a donut, but has a hole all the way through the middle. Um, and then here, this inset here is where I've dropped down over here. Um, and you can see the way that, you know, these straight lines that I drew over here you can see how they've come out and you can see how the rounded line has come out um, and basically yeah I mean this is just a good way to if you were wanted to make like a custom railing spindle if um, you wanted to make a light bulb um, generally anything that has some amount of like symmetry in, in its roundness I don't know exactly how else to say that but um, like anything that revolves around one point, I guess, or one axis. Um, so that's pretty great. It's it's a pretty great tool, and uh, it can help you a lot modeling in place and doing uh, really cool, really fine details. And and as you learn and understand how, when you draw in the profile, it all works, it becomes really easy to quickly draw some very beautiful things. So um, give it a shot. Try it out.